All right, John Riggs, around the morning show, a lot of stuff is, uh, is going on. Uh, listen, man, there's been another officer involved shooting uh, this time in East Texas. 31-year-old Jonathan Price was killed uh, by police on Saturday after trying to break up a fight at a gas station. And uh, we got uh, civil rights attorney Lee Merritt is working on behalf of Jonathan Price's family. Y'all help me welcome him to the show this morning. Uh, good morning, Lee. Good morning, Brother Ricky. How you How you doing? Man, bless this morning, man. Thank you for coming on, man. We know you're ripping and running, and uh, uh, we really appreciate you you coming on this morning. Unfortunately, you called in because another black family is saying goodbye to a loved one who was killed at the hands of police. Uh, what happened that resulted in Jonathan Price's death? Well, this past Saturday, uh, Jonathan was visiting his home city in Wolf City. It's about out, an hour outside of Dallas. And he was, um, he broke up a, 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 two people fighting. It was a, a woman and, and a man, sort of a domestic dispute. He intervened. That actually ended before law enforcement arrived. When this police officer arrived, his name was Sean Lucas. He tased um, a Jonathan who was said to have his hands up, trying to explain what happened. And uh, when he tased this rather large bodybuilder, uh, his body went forward. And, and then the officer shot him three times. What? Yeah. It, I mean, honestly, it makes no much sense. And I spoke to the, the head of the uh, Texas Rangers. We never agree on anything. You know, the Texas Rangers were involved in the investigation of Bolton Jean or Jordan Edwards and Tatiana Jefferson. They've never seen an officer involved shooting that they said was unjustifiable. But the Rangers agreed that this shooting was unjustifiable and they made an arrest last night. Mm. And, well, you know, and, man, we have... Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, we've heard that Jonathan was known as a hometown hero. I mean, what can you tell us about him? Well, Jonathan was 31 years of age. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a football player. He he moved to Dallas, which, like I said, was an hour away from his home. And uh, he, he, he started a fitness studio. He, he sold brands. And he was just known as someone who uh, was committed to his family, to his faith, and to fitness. And what do you know about the officer? Now, there's so very little known about the officer. And, and you know you know how the Internet is. They started reading John, Jonathan's Facebook posts and uh, going after his character. And I'm actually used to seeing law enforcement do that, to seeing cities try to disparage the character of the victim after they're dead. But there's so very little information that has been provided about Mr. Lucas. We know that. Uh, this cop was not from uh, Wolf City. He was relatively new. We know that there was another officer present there with him who everyone says was specifically instructing him to stand down and to not escalate the situation he did anyway. Wow. And so what happens next? Well, we, we still need a grand jury indictment, a formal indictment of this police officer. He, he received a lot, the highest bond that I've seen in North Texas, which was $1 million. And my understanding, I haven't confirmed this yet, but less, within less than an hour, someone paid it for him. And I imagine it's the police officer unions who always back up murderous cops. Mm. Mm. Wow. And, and what was he charged with, Lee? He was charged with murder. Okay. It, it was capital. Okay. What's the difference between murder and capital murder? Well, capital murder bears the, the penalty of the death penalty, uh, uh, the possibility of the death sentence. And in Texas, that's always a possibility for murder. Oh, wow. And, uh, and, and if you had to guess, uh, uh, what, what do you, you know, think is going to happen? Well, if I, if I were to guess, I, I rely on data and statistics. If less than 1% of police officers who are involved in officer involved shootings, about 1,100 a year, uh, actually see any form of indictment, let alone conviction. So if I was a betting man, I would say this this officer walks when everyone stops paying attention a year from now. If we stay focused, if we continue to push for justice like we should not have to do, then I think we might see a conviction. All right, man. Man, thank you so much, man. We just yes. uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to join us, man. Uh, if you can offer our condolences to the family, uh, we are so sorry and saddened. Uh, that this has happened, and uh, that's why we just want to uh, take this moment, man, and encourage everybody to please get out and vote where you can serve uh, on on the jury pool, you know, just like uh, 
you know, and just be be a part of the uh, a, a part of the process, man. We really appreciate you, man. Hey, thank you, Lee. Uh, you'll keep us updated on what's going on when uh, more developments come with this case, right? I will keep you all updated, and I really appreciate you always uh, highlighting these cases because without light shined on them from the media, without public pressure, these things go away. So thank you, brother. Nah, man, thank you, and that's what we're here for. Hey, man, we really appreciate you, man. Uh, Sorry to hear this right here.